Hi, I'm Carleen and welcome to my channel, The Makeover Mama. Here I enjoy sharing ways to make over everyday meals and prepare family food that is minimum effort and maximum payoff on a budget. We are a family of five with boys aged nine, five and almost one living in North Queensland, Australia. In this current season of life, I really want to embrace the little things to create a memorable childhood for our children and will share how we do family life, homemaking and seasonal events on a budget and how you can too. Good morning guys, thank you for clicking on this video. This week I've got a few fun things planned. I am going to show you some Christmas snack pack hacks. So what that means is, well you know what a Christmas snack is, but the pack hack part is we're going to hack a pack or a packet to create a beautiful dessert bar or some Christmas sweet treats that you can share with your family and loved ones. Yes, I am aware it is only mid-November. However, I don't know about you, but my calendar is certainly filling up. So stick these ideas in your back pocket or save this video to watch later when you're ready to make some festive treats. So this is everything that we're going to need today. We are going to be using a packet of these Walker's biscuits. I've got some of the um, Christmas sprinkles that I found at both Coles and Woolies from last year. Um, I've got a chalk mud, some mini M&Ms. I used my baking stash. I've got some piping bags, some food coloring, some vanilla frosting. It did have a cream cheese flavor there too, but I just went with vanilla. This is this year's Christmas sprinkles. This is the Coles branded one. I fell in love with these holly and berry leaves. I was looking for them all last year. Couldn't find them anywhere. So that is why I bought that. And yeah, so this is last year's one, which I bought solely because they had gold stars. Love it. I did check the use by date. We're still good. And we've got some Oreos, some white chocolate. Think, did I forget to show you the muffins? There's muffins there too. You may have noticed that I've decorated my kitchen early this year so that will be coming out in a future video as well. I just wanted to share this one first. I was so happy with everything how it turned out. I just wanted to get this video out there so you could save it and then use it when you needed it because I've already got Christmas parties booked for the end of this month. So I thought you might find this useful to know now. So first up we're going to do our chocolate oreo biscuits we're going to turn them into little christmas puddings so i've just got one block of white chocolate that i'm going to melt my microwave blew up so i'm going to do it old school over some water in a little saucepan there so to save dirty a chopping board and a knife i'm just going to go and crush up the packet before i empty it into my bowl and i'm just cutting them into the little sorry breaking them into the little you know one little square cubes and I'm just going to stick that on low in the background. While the chocolate is melting for our puddings we're going to work on our frosted cookies. So you're going to need a sandwich bag, some cookies ready made out of a packet, some frosting of your choice and some sprinkles. So I picked this Walker's pack from Coles because they had a lot of texture. There was a lot of indentations, there was lots of shapes marked into each cookie and that's why I thought that's what sort of sprung this idea <laughs> birthed this idea so what you want to do is uh, pick a festive tray lay out your little cookies I'm eyeballing the Santa one because I'm like what is that his face doesn't even look like Santa it looked really weird like I don't know if it was meant to be glasses or what but you'll probably see it soon enough when you <laughs> when you have a look at it Meanwhile, you would have noticed that I'm wearing glasses in this video. I normally don't because the reflection I find distracting, to be honest. And I kind of looked at them and I thought, this actually looks like Mrs. Claus's glasses, like in every movie I've ever seen ever. But my eyes are too tired for contact lenses today. Baby's been waking up like five times a night. I forgot what that was like. Oh, he's almost one, but I've been, I've been blessed the third time around. He's a good sleeper, normally almost forgot my chocolate there I was sitting there going what is that bubbling noise I'm like oh damn 
<laughs> the chocolate don't burn the chocolate because there's no coming back from burnt white chocolate just kind of doesn't have the same tang to it you know <laughs> All right, so you're going to need a sandwich bag because we're going to use this like a piping bag. I do use a piping bag in another part of the video um, because I just wanted the look, like a different look for the cupcakes. But for this, I wanted a really fine piped line, perfect for a sandwich bag. Use what you have. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that the tip is nice and pointy because I want to fill that up without any air bubbles in it. And you don't need much um, for this many cookies. I just went with the large tablespoon. I'm just squeezing that to the tip of it there. And I'm just going to knock the tip off with a pair of scissors. And that way it's going to stay really nice and fine. And I can control that a lot better. Here I am looking for a pair of scissors because now that baby's crawling, he can reach like the third drawer up. So nothing is safe. I need to get some child proofing in here. And we're back. As you can see, I didn't even know where that piece of plastic went actually. <laughs> it was so fine, so small. You just want to knock the tip of it off and that way you have greater control because it's not going to come flowing out. Now, I didn't think this far ahead. So you could have refrigerated your icing before using it to help it thicken up a little bit, especially in the warmth of your hand. And this was a really hot, humid day, guys. I'm like sweating over here. <laughs> Now for the fun part, hold your cookie over a bowl to catch the excess and shake your Christmas sprinkles or you can even use jelly crystals, whatever you like really, over the icing. Do this one at a time or a couple of cookies at a time, not too many because once that icing dries, the sprinkles, they won't stick. So do it while the icing is still damp or wet and then it will work a lot better. Decorating these cookies was one of the easiest pack hacks that I've done for a fun, festive Christmas snack. It's forgiving because even if you mess up the icing, it's easy to wipe off. Even if the icing is not perfect, it doesn't matter because it's covered in sprinkles. You really can't go wrong. And I mean, if it comes out looking really like one of those Pinterest files, like hashtag nailed it, just pretend that one of the kids made it. No one's going to second guess you. They're not going to know that it was you. <laughs> Okay, so here's our before. You can see this is a bit of an indentation of the little star on the inside, so it's easy for me to trace. And here's the after. How cute does that look? And it was so easy to do. Minimum effort, maximum payoff. That's my vibe. If this is your first time here, welcome to my kitchen. I've got three boys aged nine, almost six, and almost one. I like to do things the easy way. Why do we need to make life harder than it needs to be, right? So if you've joined us for Christmas snack pack hacks, thank you for clicking on this video and please comment below. I would love to chat to you. Let me know where you are from. I'm just gonna go ahead and decorate the rest of these cookies and I'll show you what they look like at the end. So this is the pack that I bought from Coles and you'll see up close here, Santa's glasses or his eyes or whatever's going on there. You can comment below and let me know what you think. Is his bridge of his nose really wide? Are his eyes sunken or are they glasses? I don't even know. But anyway, I tried to make him look cute. I tried to do a variation of the different types of sprinkles in each one so they weren't all exactly the same. And these little jelly crystals are the ones that are from this year's pack, the little pink or red green and white ones are from last year with the gold stars I literally bought that pack because it had the gold stars in it and I've been using them all year on birthday cakes and everything I love them for our next Christmas snack pack hack feel like that needs like a little catchy intro <laughs> tongue twister there all we need is our Oreos our chocolate that's been melting in the background and our sprinkles from our coal set so I've just gone ahead and emptied the sprinkles into a bowl just so it's easier to control where I'm placing them as opposed to you know shaking them out because I do care where they go this time so you want to violently shake your <laughs> Christmas pudding your Oreo we want it almost well, almost halfway covered with chocolate and we want to shake it because I want that droopy drip effect like a Christmas pudding covered in cream or custard and we're going to place our holly leaves and little berries on top and it's as easy as that we're going to let it set and then they're ready to serve so I'm going to go ahead and let you enjoy this next minute with some festive Christmas music as I put these together 
let me know if you can spot the one Christmas pudding which has a holly leaf back to front on there if you're OCD like me and uh, let me know if you think a six-year-old would care because I'm thinking I'm thinking not but you know comment below if you feel like since entering motherhood your care factor for the little details like that has just chilled a little bit let me know that I'm not alone in that <laughs>
for the next design we're going to do the little Santa hat so I'm just going I'm starting in the center and going sort of left right left right and then I'm making a little point to the side this is going to be Santa's hat and you'll see me finish this off in a second with his beard Now to make his little hat red looking, we're going to go ahead and use the jelly looking crystals out of our little Coles sprinkle pack that I just bought this week from, did I say Coles? I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> we're gonna shake that over a mug just to catch any of the excess. And that way I can control where the sprinkles are going. That's why we're just doing the hat portion first before his beard. Just thought I'd mention that I'm using the same star tip as I was using earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make the beard shape just by start, like meeting where the hat starts and just doing little sort of loop-de-loops on the way down. Don't know how else to explain that. And then I did two dots for the eyes, but if I was to do it again, I would skip that and I would just do all beard. And I've just done one little white little squirt on top just to do his little fluffy pom-pom thing on Santa's hat. I did toss up the idea of doing like little mini M&Ms for his eyes and I've got little leftover from Halloween little like eyeball little candies but I just liked the look of it better just being all icing it sort of just I don't know took away from it having other colors and textures on there well that's how I felt anyway but you do as you will Back to finishing off our first cupcakes I was thinking about sprinkling some cocoa on the top but I thought that it might be a little bit bitter for some of the young children so I'm just going to go ahead and add a sprinkle of Milo you could also use drinking chocolate comment below is Milo does everybody have Milo in the pantry at all times I feel like that's like a staple is that an Australian thing pretty sure it is if you don't have milo you can use drinking chocolate cinnamon powder you can even do a sprinkle of coffee if you're doing it for adults comment below if you have never seen milo on the shelf before and tell us where you're watching from we're going to go ahead and add on our little holly leaves and berries and this one's ready to go So for the last one it is a little bit more involved but it still is pretty easy considering how good it looks I wanted to make a Grinchy looking one I wish that I had some little love heart little sprinkles left over from Valentine's Day because that would look so cute you know how at the end of the movie his heart grows like three times the size or whatever um, but I've got little stocking sprinkles that I haven't used yet so I'm going to squirt in the icing that I didn't finish off in that last lot I'm going to use some green food coloring and I'm just going to stir that um, with a silicone spoon <laughs> solely because the baby is asleep but I didn't want to be clinking around um, with the metal spoon and a little ceramic cup and waking him up and I forget it'd be like a little rubber spatula <laughs> be able to scrape it off the sides really easy and mix that well now to get the two-toned look that I'm going for we're going to need a fresh bag the same tip and we're going to empty out that green filling and rub it on the inside of the bag but we're going to add white icing after so it's kind of like the outside of the bag is going to be coated in the green icing but then inside that is going to be white icing so when you squeeze it out it's going to give you that two-toned look which looks really beautiful but it also isn't that hard to do so if you just wipe it all on the outside you don't want it sort of clumped in the middle so I'm just sort of trying to insert my spoon in there and then I'm going to sort of wipe that up the bag because I want the green to be on the outside of that piping and the inside to sort of shine through to shine through white so the darker the green the better it will look because the lighter it is there's not as much contrast 
So I'm just going to open my baggie back up and I'm just going to shove that white icing <laughs> deep down inside there, trying to get past all of the green, try and get it nice and clean inside so that the inside will still remain white. Using the same star tip, I'm just going to go ahead and place it close to the cupcake and then lifting it away so it comes to a point. And I'm just going to go around the outside of our little cupcake and then work my way into the center. So if you hold it down low and squeeze it firmly, like the little stars will get bigger. They won't be like little empty little things with lots of gaps in the middle. So try that if you feel like it's really gappy, just go over the top of it and then just squeeze a little bit firmer and then it will sort of spread out a lot more before lifting the tip up. It's a little tip for you. Literally. <laughs> Pun intended. For our last snack pack hack, we need one mud cake, some green icing left over from our cupcakes we just made, the mini M&Ms which didn't work out, and I just wanted some stars for the top of our Christmas tree. So I'm using the sprinkles from last year, you don't have to do that, you can use something else if you like. So I'm just going to go ahead and squirt the rest of my unused, unfinished icing into my little cup here because I want to go in with fine piping this time so we're going to go back in with a little sandwich bag now this is a few hours later after I went grocery shopping I did not put my mud cake in the fridge because I figured it's on the shelf in the shop but I forgot that I didn't have the aircon on I'm melting the cakes melting the icing's melting off it so I'm just going to go ahead and pick off the white drizzled of the white chocolate and I went ahead and I just stuck that into like the cold fridge like the drink section in the fridge just to try and firm up that icing so I could work with it without it sort of spilling out everywhere so if you want to skip this step you know put yours in the fridge so then it's easier to work with now that my icing has firmed up a little bit I boiled the kettle while the cake was in the fridge because I want to make sure that my blade is really hot and clean so then it slices through the icing neatly so you need to go you're going to need to go and wash your knife in between each slice that you make otherwise you're going to get all crumbs stuck on the top of your icing which isn't going to look as pretty when we're trying to make them into little Christmas trees. To make our little bite sized trees look a bit more interesting I want to be able to stand them up when I serve them so I'm just cutting the smallest little slither off of the base of each the edge of each slice which will then create the base so it will stand nicely without sort of tipping over and that way not everything is you know if you're going to do a dessert bar it just adds a little bit of dimension and interest to the food that you're serving so sometimes it's not necessarily the food has to be fancy but the way we're going to serve it will be so it'll look and feel special now it's time to add our very thin shaped piping onto our trees and I've just tried to think of you know 
two, three different designs so that each slice didn't look exactly the same. So I just had a bit of a play with this and it was really easy to work with the um, Betty Crocker icing. The hardest part of this process honestly was just trying to come up with three different <laughs> designs. After a little while I realized, oh yeah, trees have stumps. Maybe I should do some with stumps too. So that's when you knew the idea well was getting pretty dry. <laughs> I had planned on adding mini M&Ms to their little Christmas trees as little Christmas lights, but they did not look right at all. You can see me having a look here like, what's going on here? <laughs> Something wrong with these. So, yo M&M, are you using natural colors now or what's, what's going on with this? I've tried to show you here, the lighting's a little bit hard, but it was almost as if they'd use natural coloring or they did like one coating, I don't know, but they looked very dull, very bland, very sad. So I just went ahead and put little gold stars on our trees instead to dress them up. And this is how they turned out. I just put a little gold star on top to dress them up and they all looked really beautiful. Except for maybe that one in the back. That's why he's back there. <laughs> I didn't quite turn my little mud cake around so I didn't realize it till the end. But he was a bit crooked. He was a bit leaning over. So I'm like, ah, he'll go to the back. No one will notice. Well, you know, but, but we're friends though, right? So that's okay, right? <laughs> we'll blame it on termite damage, the leaning tree. And this is how everything looks. So this would be a really beautiful dessert bar to put together when you've got guests over if you're hosting Christmas Eve or something. Overall these were really easy to make and I hope you enjoyed my Christmas snack pack hacks. Thank you so much for dropping by and spending some time with me today. Your time is very precious so I appreciate every moment that you spend with me here in my home. If you had fun hanging out with me today please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. This season I'm really looking to create some special memories with my three children and my husband of course he's here too <laughs> he lives here <laughs> and I hope to inspire you to do the same because you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to have fun or make memories it is possible to do on a budget so I hope we get to hang out again thank you for dropping by and I'll see you in my next video bye for now mm -hmm.